beautiful sermon today. Yeah, Pastor Jeff always gives a great message. You know what else is great about La Casa? I hear it all day. Classes are starting again. Oh, there's Liz Lucas. Liz. Oh, I've got a new class that's starting that I think you would really love. It's based on the first two chapters of 1 Samuel, and it deals with his family and all the issues that they had to face, like anxiety, depression, eating disorders, bullying, jealousy, and it just goes on and on. But these are all problems that we face or our friends are facing to now. And it shows us how God can come into our lives and give us the strength and power to overcome these issues. But you know, I'm not the only one that's going to be teaching the class. Pretty soon, Wayne's class is starting, and it sounds so great. Can you tell us a little about it, Wayne? Yes, thanks for asking. The class is called My Neighbor's Faith. Now, we all have friends, neighbors, in-laws people we work with who belong to different churches, Baptist, Methodist, Episcopal, and maybe we've often thought, well, I wonder how their church is different from our church. I wonder how what they believe is maybe the same as what we believe. Well, in this class, we're going to look at at least eight different denominations across, you know, across America. Each week, we'll look at a different group. We'll look at how they worship, what they believe, where they came from, how they might have a lot in common with would be very different with the kind of worship that we do. So I encourage you, if you've ever had questions, uh, what do they believe? Who are they? Where do they come from? Come, for our, come to the class and we'll give you those answers and you can move on from there. I can't wait to sign up. Well, can I sign up online for you, your class? You can sign up online right now. It's on, there's, a, there's a link on the newsletter that comes out every week and you can go right to the website and sign up there. Great. Oh, Great. Well, let's do it. Let's do it, let's do it. yeah. Thank you, Liz and Wayne, for telling us about your adult ed classes. We have many other classes coming up over the next several months in our adult education ministry, and we encourage you all to go to our website, lacostecristo.com slash adult dash education to find out more. And if you're interested, please sign up. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for staying connected. And now let's get ready to worship. Please stand for our gathering hymn.
worship at La Casa de Cristo, and whether you're joining us here in the sanctuary or at La Casa Live, we begin worship as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Scripture tells us that if we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a time of quiet for self-reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on us the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Save and defend us. 
this time, we're going to invite the children that are present to remain in their seats with their parents because we have a special children's message today. Uh, as many of you are aware, if you follow us on social media, on Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook this past week, we had uh, 450 children on our campus for VBX, and we've created a special video so that all of us can experience what went on in our campus this past week. Let's see the sights and sounds of VBX. Hey La Costa family, my name is Stacy Medina and I am the VBX Director as well as the Children's Ministry Director here at La Costa de Cristo. We have had an amazing week um, with over 150 volunteers and 450 students on our campus. Our week has started out each day with an amazing opening where we get to see our ringmaster and introduce our Bible story that we learn for the day. It's been so much fun with singing and dancing and learning all about God. As the kids separate into their new groups, they get to do amazing crafts, a frame, a cross, and all the different creative things that makes a great day. They've also got, gotten to go outside um, and inside for our recreation where they play games together, laugh together, run together, and have a great time experiencing um, fun as our La Casa family. Um, the other thing that they do during the day is they go to our story time. It's story time where our amazing volunteers teach our Bible lesson for the day. We've learned a bunch of different themes like God is faithful and God is listening and all the important things that we want our kids to leave our campus knowing um, who God is and how amazing his love is for us. Um, we have had such a great week with so much fun and laughter, and it's been great seeing our campus so incredibly full. Um, our hearts are full as staff and as volunteers, and we are just so grateful that you and your children have become part of our La Casa family. We have so many great things here at La Casa, and we can't wait to have you join us throughout the year for more fun. A huge thank you to all of our volunteers that have helped us to make VBX possible. From preparation to our volunteers all over our campus all week, there's no way that we could do VBX without you. We are so thankful for your time, your prayers, and for all that you do for us. What do you like? I like learning about God. And indeed, all glory be to Jesus Christ for this past week. You know, our church's mission statement, if you haven't looked at it in a while, is to love those who don't know Jesus Christ and to grow those who do, to love those who don't know Jesus and grow those who do. Many of the children on our campus this week didn't know about Jesus Christ before they came. So we continue through our strategic plan to reach all generations, to reach out into our community. And we are grateful for your support this past week. Can we recognize all of our volunteers and staff for all they did? And now let's share the love and peace of Jesus Christ as you're so able by moving out of your seats and greeting one another in the name of the Lord. Let's share God's peace. We will invite you to be seated at this time as we hear our morning reading from God's Word. As printed on page 403 of the Pew Bible, Psalm 46, for the director of music or the sons of Korah, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way 
and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar in foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High lives. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her break at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and scatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The word of the Lord. to you from God who is our Father, 
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who also gives us the promised presence of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Awkward, wasn't it? Silence. You have an expectation that after the pastor finishes his or her prayer or blessing that they will immediately begin to speak. We don't know often in life what to do with silence because we live in a world of words, words, and more words. And as we come to this final week of our focus on prayer, we've spent the past eight weeks really sharing in our life together about all the different aspects of prayer. And today the focus is what happens when it appears that God is silent in our life? What is it that happens in our life when it appears that despite our days or weeks or months of prayers that God is silent in our spiritual life. You know, we make a lot of assumptions about things. And there's a humorous story about a pastor in a small town who made an assumption about something that didn't work out so well. This church in this small town kind of struggled financially and the pastor decided that in order to save money that they would remove all the paper towels from the men and women's restroom and they would install hot air hand dryers so that you would dry your hands that way and they figured they'd save a lot of money. So he went to the board of elders and the board of elders approved this and they installed the hot air hand dryers. But after only one Sunday, the pastor was very upset and went back to the board and said, you know, he said, they're still under warranty. I'm going to request that we remove the hot air hand dryers and return to the paper towels. And they said, why, Pastor? You wanted to do this. You wanted to save money. He said, because someone on the first Sunday put up a sign above the hot air hand dryer. For a further sample of this morning's sermon, please push the button below. Our assumptions don't always work out so well. And in our spiritual life, what often happens with you and me is we make assumptions because we don't hear directly from God or we don't see maybe a visible presence in our life that God is silent. Several years ago, there was a woman in Palm Beach, Florida named Bertha Adams. She died at the relatively young age of 73. She weighed only 65 pounds and was emaciated at the time of her death. She had gone around all the dumpsters in Palm Beach, Florida, and there she found her meals and tried to eat what little she could, and also she scavenged clothes from people's garbage cans and refuse. But the interesting thing was this. When Bertha Adams' estate was settled, it was determined she was worth $2.5 million. And everyone said, how foolish, how foolish for this woman to live this way. How foolish that she lived that way, scavenging for food and clothes out of dumpsters when she had all the resources that she needed. How critical people were of her. And yet, in our own spiritual lives, we don't understand our own spiritual poverty Because you see, God has given us all of these gifts in our life. God has given us the signposts of his Holy Spirit. God is always active in our lives, whether we think he is silent or not, because he is God. So we need to look for that and understand today why that is so important. The first place in your life where oftentimes we believe God is silent is a time of crisis, challenge, adversity, or confrontation a time of great challenge in our life when things may be not going so well. And in the midst of that, what happens is you and I, we turn to God and say, God, why? Why are you silent? Because we believe that prayer and our spiritual life is about God doing nice things to us or for us. But that's never the witness of Scripture. Rather, the promise is God is with us through the good and the bad. 
God was with his son on a cross. And so in the midst of that, we take a cue from our namesake, Martin Luther, the one for whom our church is named battled many things in his life, among them many physical ailments and among what many believe in our modern day was clinical depression. And in Luther's time of great darkness, one time he walked into his study and he noticed that there was dust on his writing desk and in the myth, midst of his depression, in the midst of his darkness, he wrote in the dust, vivet, vivet, which is Latin for he lives, he lives. Martin Luther claimed the resurrection power of God in the midst of the darkness of his life and that's what you and I need to understand as well. You see, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of challenges, there is always resurrection. A number of years ago, a woman in the church I was serving at that time came up to me and said, Pastor, she said, I've gone to church for decades. She said, I've been in church every Sunday, but I've never felt closer to Jesus than I have in the past couple weeks. Do you find that strange? And I said, I don't find that strange at all. I find that a sign of resurrection. This is what we need to see, that God's apparent silence in our life does not mean that he is is not working, but that he's always looking to renew. He's always looking to turn the dust of our lives into something new and that he always lives. So the next time you're saying, God, why are you so quiet? The next time you're saying, Jesus, why aren't you answering my prayers? Understand God is active in your life. He's working behind the scenes, preparing for the next chapter. And that leads us to the second point that God appears in our silence and God is active when we come to the end of our human understanding and acknowledge our human limitations and recognize that God is God. You see, we can't do these things by our own strength. We can't live our lives by our own strength, even though we often try. And yet when we turn things over to God, it is so important to see that's another signpost of the Spirit, that when we relinquish our human control and understanding, then we know and understand that God is active in our life. You know, at the beginning of this summer, we as a church had no idea how we were going to staff confirmation camp, our summer trip for our youth, and our vacation Bible experience, but we turned it over to God and God provided because we recognized the end of our human understanding and limitations and the beginning of God's. And that's what we need to know and understand today. I picked Psalm 46 that Jim read for you this morning deliberately because it is such a powerful psalm that reminds us that God is active even when it appears he is silent. But you need to know the background of this important psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in a time of trouble, ending with the words, be still and know that I am God. This psalm, was the inspiration for Martin Luther's hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. But even more important than that is if you go to your Bible or in your Bible app, look at the beginning of the psalm, you will see the words that Jim spoke before the psalm. For the director of music, for the sons of Korah. Who was Korah? K-O-R-A-H. You can read about him in the book of Numbers. He opposed Moses. He opposed God. And for his punishment, Korah was swallowed up by the earth in an earthquake. There's some belief that the writer of this psalm was referring to the rather ignoble end of Korah when he talked about the earth melting and shaking and falling away. But you see, God in his mercy also saved the sons 
of Korah. And the sons of Korah became instrumental in the history of Israel. The sons of Korah were the ones who were responsible for all the music and the choral music and instrumental music in the tabernacle, in the temple. They were the music ministry for the people of Israel. The sons of Korah were given great responsibility and out of tragedy and adversity, the words are spoken, God is our refuge and strength. When we come to the end of our human limitations, when we recognize we are dependent upon God and God alone, then we can understand that even in silence, God is moving. And then third, we understand that God in Christ Jesus always moves in unexpected ways, in unexpected circumstances, and he moves through you and me in places and situations we don't anticipate. And we need to be open to the signposts of the Holy Spirit that when you have a hunch, when you have an instinct in life, that you should reach out to someone. As we spoke last week, that faith is not just about receiving, but giving. When you have a hunch that admits your own spiritual life, even if you feel God is silent in your life, that you should still be looking out and reaching out to others. Many years ago, in a different church, there were two men in the church that I was serving as pastor named Ralph and John. They were very active in the church, part of the choir, part of the men's ministry, there every Sunday. But after a period of time, John noticed that something was going on with Ralph that Ralph just wasn't himself, that he was quiet, more withdrawn, seemed to be down. So John said, you know, something's going on. I'm going to invite him out for coffee. And as he invited him out for coffee, Ralph spilled out his whole life. Problems at home, problems in his marriage, problems with his children, mental challenges. And in the midst of all that, he finally turned to him and said, thank you for asking me out for coffee. Tomorrow would have been too late. I have a whole bottle of sleeping pills, and I was going to take them tonight. You never know how God will show up in your life in unexpected ways, unexpected circumstances, how God may use you, even if you feel God is silent in your life, to impact the life of others. And what we know and understand then is that even when it appears God is silent, in times of adversity, in times where we want to maintain control, in times where we're only looking for him in the places we expect to find him, this sanctuary, or the gathering place, or this campus, and we're not looking for him at work, or at home, or in our neighborhood, or in our daily life, that in those moments, God comes. You see, the greatest testimony to all of this, to understand that God is always active in our lives with his resurrection power, is what I shared with some of you in a Bible study recently. There was a period in the life of the people of Israel and the early church called the intertestamental period, the period of time for 400 years, not four years, not 40 years, four hundred years from the end of the prophets, from the end of the prophecy of Malachi to the birth of Jesus Christ, when people believed that God had gone silent, that he did not speak to his people for 400 years. But God was speaking. God was active. 
He wasn't speaking through the ways people expected. He wasn't speaking through the prophets. He was working behind the scenes, preparing for the birth of Jesus Christ. And all sorts of things were going on, from the rise of a man named Antiochus Epiphanes to the rise of the Greek and Roman and Jewish culture to Alexander the Great and all the clashes of cultures and nations and languages. And in the midst of these clashes with the Greek and the Roman and the Jewish world, the Hebrew scriptures were translated into the Greek called the Septuagint, and that paved the way for the New Testament in Greek, later to be translated into Latin, later to be translated into German, and later to be translated into English so that you and I could read it. Without those 400 years, we would not have the scriptures we had today. Without the rise of the Roman Empire, we would not have had the highways and byways built so that the Apostle Paul would be able to spread the word of God. God was not silent. And he is not silent today. And if you think that, then in the words of the book, your God is too small. Because when we believe God is silent, it is simply we are looking for him in the wrong places. God always has a plan. And in your life and mine, as you go back and read this psalm, think about the origin of the psalm. Think about who it was written for. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. And the next time that you believe God is silent in your life, understand he is active, working behind the scenes, preparing you for the next chapter. Be still and know that he is God. Amen. We will worship this morning with our morning offering. And as our ushers receive the offering physically, you may also give electronically online. We also will worship with a musical offering as well.
please stand as we share in the words of our statement of faith, the words of the Nicene Creed as shown on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he became bound from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. One of the other ways God speaks to us is through this meal. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And every time you gather, do this to remember me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them. And he said, this cup is now the new covenant, because it is shed in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this every time you drink this to remember me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns again. Please join me in our family prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Please be seated. We invite the communion assistants forward, and as they're coming forward, if you're with us for the first time today, you're welcome to the Lord's table. Our ushers will direct you to the appropriate station. We commune by intinction, receive the wafer, and then dip it into the chalice of wine or grape juice. Gluten-free wafers are available in the center aisle.
Please stand. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the healing power of this gift of life, this bread and this wine, which is your body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. As we go out into the world, help us to remember that you are always active. And as we understand we come to the end of the worship service, let us remember that our service is just beginning to the world. And so guide us now and bring us back safely together again to this place. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord smile upon us and look upon us with his favor and give us his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks.